Welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. My name is David, and I am going to tell you a wonderful story that will lull you into a peaceful and restful sleep. Tonight, I will tell you a story about how a poor woodcutter found a cave of treasure. Before we begin, make sure that you are safely tucked in bed. Now, close your eyes and relax. Feel your body relax as you breathe in and out. Continue to breathe in and out. When you feel relaxed, you are ready to listen to the story. Once upon a time, in a small Persian town, there lived two brothers, Kasim and Ali Baba. Ali Baba was a poor woodcutter who made a living by selling wood at the market. Kasim was a wealthy merchant who lived a life of luxury. One day, while in the forest chopping wood, Ali Baba saw a band of horsemen riding towards him. There were so many of them that they approached like a cloud of dust. Thinking these men were bandits, Ali Baba scrambled to hide in a tree. When the dust settled, Ali Baba counted forty men on horseback, all armed with swords. After dismounting their horses, the men tied the reins to the trees and stood in line. Moments later, a man dressed in a breastplate of gold stepped out of the ranks and commanded the rest of the group. That man is their captain, thought Ali Baba as he clung to the tree branch. The captain approached a clearing with a pile of rocks and called out, Open Sesame. In a moment, a door opened in the pile of rocks, which revealed a stairway leading below. The captain descended the stairway and disappeared out of sight. Ali Baba tried to lean in closer to see better, but he could not see past the sea of forty men who were now making their way down the stairway after their captain. After the last man made his way into the stairwell, the door closed behind him, hidden in a pile of rocks. Amazed at what he saw, Ali Baba scurried down the tree and moved in closer to the clearing. He hid behind the bushes as he waited for them to come out. When the door opened after some time, the first to emerge was the captain, followed by the thirty-nine other men. When the last man emerged and mounted his horse, the captain stood in front of the door of rock. With a swift motion of his hand, he called out, Close, Sesame. In an instant, the door closed. The men rode off, and just as they came, left a cloud of dust in their wake. After making sure that the men had all left, Ali Baba came out of the bushes and examined the concealed door. Ali Baba thought of opening the door for himself to see what lay below. Open Sesame called out Ali Baba. And just as before, 
the door swung open and revealed a staircase. Only Baba expected to see a dull and dark stairway, but what he saw before him left him in awe. A glistening stairwell covered in gold and jewels greeted him. The cave below was not dark at all, but it was glowing with the sunlight that streamed inside. Ali Baba could not believe his eyes, and as he made his way down the stairs, what he saw next almost struck him speechless. Inside was a vast array of treasures. He found expensive rolls of silk, gold and silver all piled up to the ceiling, and all kinds of jewels scattered all over the floor. If I could take some of this treasure, my family will no longer be poor, thought Ali Baba as he examined all the treasures in the cave. No sooner had he thought of taking some treasure, and Ali Baba was already fast at work, gathering what he could from the pile of silver and gold. Ali Baba brought out as much silver, gold, and beautiful silk that his donkey could carry. After loading the last bag of treasure on his donkey, he covered it all in twigs so that people would not notice. Ali Baba stood in front of the doorway and called out, Close, Sesame. At that moment, the ground rumbled as the door closed and returned hidden behind the pile of rock. Ali Baba rode home, and as soon as he entered the gates to his house, he shut the door behind him and called out to his wife, Come, see what I have brought. Ali Baba called out as he unloaded the bags of silver, gold, and silk. His wife came, and could not believe her eyes when she saw all the treasures laid out in their yard. Oh, Ali Baba, where did you get all this treasure? She asked as she examined the delicate silk. Ali Baba told his wife the tale of how he came upon the den of hidden treasure and asked her to keep this a secret to which she agreed. We have to hide the treasure, said Ali Baba. I will dig a hole where we can bury all this silver and gold. Wait, replied his wife. Before you bury the silver and gold, we have to measure them first. I will borrow a cup from your brother's house while you dig the hole. Ali Baba's wife went to Kasim's house to borrow a measuring cup. Kasim's wife took out her measuring cup, but knowing that Ali Baba was too poor to afford good grain, Kasim's wife was curious to know what kind of grain they were measuring. So, before she lent the measuring cup, she brushed some tar on the bottom where pieces of grain could stick. With her borrowed measuring cup, Ali Baba's wife scooped up the silver and gold many times before she could fill the hole dug up by Ali Baba. After she scooped up the last pieces of silver and gold, she returned the measuring cup to Kasim's wife, without noticing that there was a gold coin stuck to the bottom of the container. This gold coin was not left unnoticed by Kasim's wife. Jealous of Ali Baba's fortune, 
Kasim's wife exclaimed. See here, Kasim, as she held up the gold coin. Your brother is richer than us. He does not count his gold, he measures them. Curious about the matter, Kasim asked Ali Baba about how he had come across such a fortune. Thinking Kasim and his wife already knew about their secret, Ali Baba told his brother all about the cave of treasures. If this is so, I will go there and take some for myself, said Kasim after Ali Baba told him all about the cave. Ali Baba even shared with him the secret words for opening and closing the door. Early the next morning, Kasim took ten donkeys and ten chests with him and rode off into the forest before sunrise. Upon arriving at the cave, Kasim recalled Ali Baba's instructions. Open sesame, he called out. To his surprise, the door opened and revealed a bejeweled staircase, just how Ali Baba had described it. Kasim took the ten chests into the cave and filled them all to the brim with gold, silver, and jewels of all colors and sizes. He grew excited at the thought of how much wealthier he would become. When he gathered what he could, he tried to recall the words to open the door. Open, he called out. The door did not open. Open barley, he tried again. Still, the door stood shut. Open corn, open wheat. Open lentils. Kasim called out all the crops he could remember. He uttered all but the right one. So, he remained sealed inside, afraid that the forty thieves would find him looting their treasure. It was noon before the forty thieves came back to the cave. As soon as they opened the door, they found Kasim cowering behind the ten chests he had filled with treasure. The captain was so angry when he found Kasim in the cave trying to steal from them, he ordered his men to take Kasim and tie him up. As a punishment, the captain took his clothes and tore them to pieces and left it in the cave's entrance as a warning to other men who might try to steal their treasure. By nightfall, Kasim's wife worried about his absence. She asked Ali Baba if he knew where her husband was. Do not worry, sister. I will look for your husband and bring him back to you. Ali Baba tried to comfort her, knowing that his brother was in trouble for trying to steal the thieves' loot. Ali Baba, worried for his brother, found his way back to the cave of treasures. To his surprise, he found his brother's torn clothes hanging at the entrance. He took them down and slipped them in his bag. For the second time, Ali Baba descended into the cave after saying the commands. Open sesame, he called out, and the doors opened just as before. Ali Baba took four more chests of treasure along with his brother's garments before leaving the cave. As he entered his brother's house, he presented Kasim's wife the torn garments. Upon seeing them, the wife cried, knowing that she will never see her husband again. However, 
Ali Baba also gave her the two chests filled with treasure. The treasure somehow eased the wife's grief. Ali Baba had in his service a servant girl named Morgiana. Knowing that Kasim's disappearance would cause a disturbance, he asked Morgiana to keep this a secret, to make it seem that he had not disappeared. Find the best person who can sew his clothes back together, Ali Baba continued. Go into town and look for Baba Mustafa. He will know what to do. But blindfold him on the way back here, lest he finds out where we live. Mordiana made her way into town and looked for Baba Mustafa, a cobbler who owned a stall in the market. Good sir, said Morgiana, please make haste and help my master. But to do this, I must blindfold you on the way there. She then gave him a piece of gold. Oh, so you will have me do something bad against my conscience, replied Baba Mustafa. Why, I will never ask you to do anything against your conscience. It's just that my master asks your service in secret. So please come along and put on the blindfold. Baba Mustafa agreed to be blindfolded and came along, led by Morgiana. When they reached Kasim's house, she allowed him to take off his blindfold. It was already dark when they reached the house. I will leave you here to do your work, Morgiana told Baba Mustafa, as she handed him the torn pieces of clothing. Once you finish, I will take you back to the town with your blindfold on. Baba Mustafa made quick work of sewing the torn pieces of clothing together. Working by candlelight, he repaired fabric as if it had never torn. As agreed, Morgiana led him back to town, blindfolded. The captain grew worried about the discovery of the cave, so he sent out his men to ask around the town for anything suspicious. One of his men passed by Babu Mustafa's stool while he was sewing a piece of cloth in the dark and he stopped to look. You have such a skill to sew in the dark, old man, the thief commented. Why, you will be amazed to know that I could sew a piece of clothing together in the dark after they blindfolded me. Intrigued, the thief continued to talk to Baba Mustafa. Tell me, where is this house where you sewed in the dark? Why, I can't remember because they blindfolded me. But it was a grand house, and they paid me handsomely for my troubles, replied Baba Mustafa. Come with me, and lead me to that house, said the thief, as he handed Baba Mustafa two gold coins. Baba Mustafa took the gold coins, and slipped them in his purse. He was again blindfolded as he walked with the thief and tried to recall the way that led to Ali Baba's house. They reached the house and came to a stop. Here, yeah, this is where the lady took off my blindfold. And if I remember it right, this is the house I told you about. The thief. Excited to tell the captain about his discovery, marked the door of Ali Baba's house with red chalk. This mark will let the captain know that this is the house of the thief in our cave, said the thief as he hurried back to his captain. After the thief left, Morgiana stepped out of the door as she was about to go to the market. 
she noticed the red mark on the doorway. Although she did not know what it was for, she believed that it meant that there was an evil plot against her master. She then marked three other houses with red chalk and went back inside. As the captain and his men rode into town, he found that there were four houses with the same red mark. Furious about this failure, the captain sent away the man who marked Ali Baba's house. The following day, another man tried to mark the house. This man went about by doing the same thing, asking for Baba Mustafa's help and marking Ali Baba's door with red chalk. Morgiana also foiled this plan. Seeing that there was another red mark, she also went about marking their neighbor's doors. The second time the thieves went into town, they met the same fate. This time, the captain took matters in his own hands. Disguised as a merchant, he asked for the help of Baba Mustafa to locate Ali Baba's house. Upon reaching the house, the captain circled the area again and again until he could remember the place by heart. After going back to his men, he asked them to secure 38 large barrels. When the barrels were complete, he had his men each climb into a barrel and closed the lid. All but one barrel contained a thief. One barrel he had reserved to and filled with oil. The captain loaded the barrels on 19 mules and set out to Ali Baba's house with a plan. By nightfall, the thieves reached Ali Baba's house. The captain, disguised as an oil merchant, knocked on the door. Sir, I have come a long way to sell my oil at tomorrow's market. Can I bother you for a place to stay for the night? asked the captain, trying to sound weary. Ali Baba examined the man, and seeing that he looked trustworthy and harmless, welcomed him into his house. Tonight, this man is our guest, Ali Baba told Morgiana. Draw him a bath, and cook for him warm broth. After the captain went into his room, Morgiana went about preparing the broth, but seeing that she had run out of oil to light a fire, she did not know what to do. Don't worry, said Abdallah, another servant. Just go out into the yard and take some oil out of one jar. Morgiana went outside in the darkness and opened one of the thirty-eight jars. To her surprise, instead of oil, there was a man inside. The thief, thinking it was their captain, asked, Is it time? Not yet, said Morgiana as she put the lid back on. But soon, realizing that her master had led the thieves into their home, Morgiana thought, thought up a plan. She heated the jar that contained the oil, and once the oil was boiling, she poured it into the rest of the pots that hid the thieves. Burned from the hot oil, the thieves ran away. When the captain found out that his men were burned and had left, he realized that they had discovered his plan and he climbed over the gates to escape. When the captain did not come out to dine with them, Ali Baba wondered what had become of him. Why, he is not a real merchant, Morgiana answered when Ali Baba asked her about the captain. Look here. Morgiana opened the now empty jars that now contained weapons left behind by the thieves. 
That man planned to hurt you and this family. So I drove them away. Ali Baba thanked Morgiana for what she did to protect his family. And, in return, he offered her freedom. The captain returned to the cave of treasures, and seeing it was lonely there without his men, vowed to avenge them. Days had passed and the captain, now dressed as a wealthy trader named Kojia Hassan, set up a stall in the market. He had befriended Ali Baba's son, who invited him to their house for supper. Ali Baba did not recognize the captain in his disguise of beautiful robes of linen, and he believed that he was a fine rich man. Kojia Hassan refused to eat the food served, saying, I am sorry, but I cannot eat any food with salt in it. Ali Baba urged his servants to take away the food and cook up a different meal with no salt. When Morgiana heard this, it intrigued her to know about their strange visitor. She took a peek and to her surprise, it was the captain sitting next to Ali Baba. Morgiana dressed up as a dancing girl and performed in front of Ali Baba and the captain. She performed many dances which pleased Ali Baba. When Morgiana came closer to the captain, he tried to take out a gold coin from his purse to give to her as a present. However, it surprised everyone when Morgiana took out a dagger and pointed it at the captain. Look, master, Morgiana started. This man is no trader. He is the captain of the forty thieves and the false merchant who had planned on harming this family. It was then that Ali Baba noticed the dagger hidden underneath the man's cloak. He had him bound and sent away. Ali Baba thanked Morgiana for her service and again gave her freedom. He also offered her marriage to his son. Morgiana and Ali Baba's son married in a few days and lived a happy life as husband and wife. A year later, Ali Baba revisited the cave of treasures. Open sesame, he called out as before. The cave door opened and revealed that the treasure was untouched. Ali Baba took all the gold and jewelry that he could carry and told his son all about the secret of the cave. His son also passed this on to his children, and so it became that Ali Baba's family was wealthy for the rest of their lives. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please join me tomorrow for a new story to help you fall asleep. Until then, sweet dreams.